Um, let's let's talk about altcoins because uh, a lot of people right now they're very interested, like you said, in getting those gains. No one I know asked me about Bitcoin. You know what they asked me about? They asked me about Ethereum. They asked me about Cardano. They asked me about you know some. They asked me about Bitcoin Cash because they see it and they're like, "Is this Bitcoin and it's cheaper?" You know, I'm right. talking about the the novice person coming into crypto. Because uh, I get that concept of we've already missed Bitcoin. Like the largest gains in Bitcoin's history are already over. But for some of these altcoins, they could still be in store. So, what are some what are some altcoins that uh, you're looking at right now? Um, yeah, a quick note, real quick. I think a sure. lot of newcomers come in and look at Bitcoin. They don't even realize they can buy fraction, you know, 100%. Uh, pieces of Bitcoin. I think that plays a lot uh, into it, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I've covered a lot of altcoins over the years. A lot of them failed. The ones that stuck around, you know, like like Cardano, like mm -hmm. Binance Chain, like um, even Chainlink, um, Aave, you, which used to be Ethlin. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of these guys. The ones that stuck around, they're like the big caps of today, right? Um, and that's why I, I still advise people to look at those because now I feel like, newcomers even look at say cardano or binance chain and they say oh, okay it's it's already pumped up so much it's 40 billion dollars market cap i need to go smaller and yeah. i think that's the wrong way to look at it because i think there's still a lot of room to grow even with these big caps yeah there's a lot of room to grow with mid caps and same thing with small caps but right now if you look at the small caps generally they have to be a DeFi play or an nft play for them to actually move yeah uh, anything else, they're kind of like dead in the water right mm -hmm. now because people are like newcomers are just jumping in what's hot, what pumps up like 100% day over day or something. That's the problem, right? So um, I think that can lead to bad things. That's why some people feel like NFTs is like ICOs of 2017. Um, there's a lot of hype around it. There's a lot of people jumping in just to make a quick buck. But I do think I've opened my mind because I used to be more like a Bitcoin maximist where I think everything just basically diverts your attention away from Bitcoin and it yeah. causes you to lose more Bitcoin. But, you know, I came to the conclusion, you look at what's going on with Bitcoin right now, how it's disrupting the whole world and basically going to disrupt gold forever. Yeah. Uh, what comes after that? It can't Ooh, be that this. just Bitcoin yeah. dominates and that's it. And nothing else from blockchain <laughs> dominates, right? So DeFi is so early, decentralized finance so early. And same thing with NFTs. It might be a fad right now, but I don't think it's going to go away. There's so many musicians, artists, creators. Um, they're all looking into it. So I think right now is you want to look at some of these promising ones. And if they do survive, just like the altcoins survived from 2017, they're going to be the big powerhouses of yeah. the future, right? So that's how I look at it. Well, uh, you know, I've been a big proponent of saying the market's going to fix itself. You know, like the NFT market, everybody's so worried about the NFT market. Like, oh gosh, what happens if, you know, uh, LeBron James put out an NFT and he puts too much and it's not rare enough and the people buy it and they lose money because it never gets a value. Welcome to the world of collectible trading. Like, that's how the entire collectibles market works. I actually used to sell football helmets, sign football helmets for a long time. Um, well, for about a year and a half. It's not a super long time. But um, we did it on Facebook, and we had a lot of success with it. And it was very interesting watching the memorabilia market because, you know, what something's worth today, it won't be worth tomorrow. And we kind of had a little bubble in the football helmet industry that happened. And you know what happened? The market fixed itself. Yes, People lose money in that, but if you wait around and the, it comes back, you can get your money back. And I think that what a lot of these celebrities, and look, we are we are talking to celebrities. We're having celebrities uh, and musicians contacting us about helping them with NFTs. They're all thinking about it right now. And for some of them, it could be like maybe some kind of cash grab, but they're mm -hmm. going to have to learn how to set those prices and get that market to where they can have longevity. Because the people right. that come in and they sell you know, a thousand cards and then they leave, that's not going to really do them any benefit long term. Those people that actually build communities around those cards and give them utility and stuff, those people will do really well. But to think that like somehow the NFT market's going to crash crypto or like it's a new ICO craze. I, I mean, really, I can argue the ICO craze is actually what fixed the crypto markets because it was getting absolutely insane. So, you know, we need those healthy corrections and things like that. Yeah. And people forget, despite the fact ICOs, a lot of ICOs failed. 
again, the, the good ones mm -hmm. survived and they're the big dogs of today. Yep. I mean, Cardano went through it. Uh, a lot of these guys went through it. The ones that are loved today, they held ICOs in 2017, 2018. Yep. So it's not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of interesting things, a lot of interesting things. I'm just going to mention one off the, I'm sure. looking at CMC right now, like Theta, for example. Yeah. Theta is not really NFT play, but they're categorized as a project that's in it. Gaming but, kind of, I mean, it helps with gaming streaming, I guess. That's yeah, has but the they're, link. they're, they're dominant with, uh, decentralized streaming, although mm. they're, they don't get the traffic like YouTube or Twitch, but they have a working platform. You know, they're, they're doing a lot of stuff they have. Um, they have gaming streaming too. They do have NFT marketplace, but they're doing a whole lot. So they're standing on their own and they have good partnerships. So, I mean, that's a clear example of a company that, that, that survived, that's doing really well. They're categorized. There's someone in there, but that, that's not really what they're about. But you have a lot of companies like that. That's, yeah, I say companies, but more like projects, right. but, um, that, that, that's really versatile, you know, that, that could really grow into the next YouTube, right? As much as we complain about YouTube, it's it's a streaming platform everyone's on, yeah. right? But you need to have platforms to grow and develop and eventually they could become the next YouTube, yeah. right? So that's, that's a clear example one, a project I really like. Yeah, I think it's interesting because uh, right before we went on air, of course I had all these technical difficulties over here. I was talking about your camera because your camera is really great. Like your camera is really good. And you had mentioned to me, well, but by the time it gets streamed, the the quality gets downgraded. That's yeah. the whole problem that Theta's trying to solve. They're trying to make enough bandwidth for you know anyone to be able to stream decentralized by using you know nodes around the world to use computer processing power to be able to make your streams clearer.